There's a lot of suicide risk in eating disorders because it's such a miserable disease. Folks who are in their eating disorders are thinking about body weight, food, and exercise 90% of the day. That's all they think about. Three years ago, Kendra Brooks came dangerously close to dying from anorexia and bulimia. I started to uh, feel like I needed to punish myself in some ways. Depressed by her mother's recent passing and her pending divorce, Kendra stopped eating. I saw the scale drop 10 pounds in a matter of a month. And then I saw it drop another 10 pounds. And then it just continued. And I was averaging about 10 pounds a month. From a healthy 5'8", 160 pounds, Kendra quickly starved herself down to a mere 106 pounds. She has no pictures of herself at her thinnest because she thought she was too fat to be photographed. I was always um, looking at models or um, just actresses on TV, and I would be like, wow, I want to be skinny like that. She had to put locks on all of her kitchen cabinets to prevent herself from binging. I would wake up in the middle of the night and go to the cabinets and I could have a whole jar of peanut butter that had never been opened. And I would eat the entire jar of peanut butter. Or I would have a whole box of waffles and I would eat an entire box, just any type of carb, really. Um, and then I would go right back to bed and not even realize that I, had, that I had done it. The constant binging followed by purging nearly ruptured Kendra's esophagus, caused ulcers, and led to multiple hospitalizations. And the therapist let me know at that point that if I didn't get help, that I was going to die. But what strikes me is the phone call I got from Kendra. Kendra bared her soul to Anytime Fitness Club owner Chris Hartz. And that's how I think we're different a little bit as a health club, because we are more intimate and we engage our members a lot more, which is great. I wouldn't have it any other way. Squeeze that. It's better. You feel the difference? I do. Yeah, Personal good. trainer Michelle Stallard helped Kendra understand that strong, not thin, is beautiful and that Kendra could trust her. You can tell that she was in trouble. When she was ready to, to really open up and to really share, then she knew I was a safe person to talk to. I love these fans. Have I mentioned that? <laughs> she listened to me. I told her about the disorder. And everyone else that I told about the disorder seemed to believe. I'm sorry. But um, she didn't. She didn't leave. <laughs> Come on, let's see. This is my baby. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Working out with <laughs> Michelle, Kendra quickly got stronger and help. hungrier. Two years ago, I would have never eaten this. Now, it's like, bring it up. She started eating right and added 20 pounds of muscle. I was going to the gym. That was my therapy. Sensing that it would be cathartic, Michelle suggested that Kendra begin running. Oh, yeah. The night before a recent half marathon, Kendra shared intimate details with Michelle and a few others about her eating disorder. Um, she just really opened up and it was, I mean, we all were crying, it was really emotional and um, she just shared that she wanted to leave it at the finish line. That was her goal. That was the first time I'd heard that. By about mile six, I started to really get lost in some thoughts. By about mile 10, I was emotionally exhausted. And when I crossed the finish line, there were people there. They were screaming, they were yelling, they were jumping up and down. And the minute that I crossed that finish line, I knelt down because there was a plastic ramp that you had to cross. And I knelt down and I touched that and I touched the ground and I said, I'm, it's gone. I left it there. No longer tortured by food or distorted body images. I probably wouldn't change anything about myself. I, I pretty much like, like what I see. Kendra Brooks is now the picture of health. Right now, I love my life again.